one time I was in Japan, there was a mother, she was up there, she was in the, on the train with her two kids. Her kids didn't want to sit next to me. They were, they were afraid of me. Well, you know, because I was different. They, you know, I wasn't someone that they've ever seen before. Today we're joined with Sean. He has recently made a very interesting video concerning the state of racism in Asia, particularly Japan and Korea. But before we get to the topic, why don't you introduce yourself? Hey everybody, uh, my name is Sean. Uh, my platform is Sean on site. I have been a traveler uh, mainly around mainly around Asia uh, since 2012. I'm actually back in the USA right now, but uh, um, I've made videos over the years of uh, my travels uh, throughout the continent, South Korea, Japan, and at one point, Taiwan. And uh, right now I, I'm actually working, I actually work as a um, as an insurance adjuster. I make Wi-Fi money. And I'm also, I'm still traveling, but I'm also coaching people as well too, and to uh, get people interested and excited about traveling and what to expect. I used to have a lot of people, you know, uh, uh, a lot of people, a lot of black, a lot of black men come up to me and say, oh, no, black men and women, black people in general, they come up to me and say, hey, we like that you're doing that. We've been told all these things about, about Asia and such. I said, okay, cool. I never really went in making anything about racism or race uh, my thing because I, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of that. I just want to just showcase me doing cool things, me interacting with people, talking to people, and showing. And, and eventually, it got to the point where I say, "Hey, here's how you can talk to people." Because so many people in our generation and younger, they have anxiety. They say, oh, I'm afraid to talk to people. I say, "Here, here's how you do it. It's this easy." We're going straight to the topic then, because I watched your video, with, which I think went somewhat viral online and and i think there, there's a reason for it and the reason is that you make it very clear that uh often westerners have a prejudice uh, especially towards uh, um far east asian countries like uh, korea and japan uh, thinking that uh, somehow they will be uh, more racist uh, than uh, other countries uh, and but it seems from uh, what you collected from your experience that that is not the case could you could you get to that Oh, absolutely. So um, at least here in the USA, um, even from like my mom's generation, when she was a young girl, um, there were a lot of Koreans that did come into the USA, uh, like d d sometime in the 60s and the 70s. A lot of them would open up businesses and did would just blow up. And a lot of but a lot of them would, would make would um, open up businesses in black neighborhoods and really, really run down black neighborhoods and make money doing that. And a lot of times, a lot of Koreans, they would be racist towards a lot of young black people that were going to the stores for this, that, and the other mm. and everything. And I've had people even tell me straight up, say, hey, we don't, uh, 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 people in those countries like that in Korea, they're going to be racist towards you just because of your skin color. I go over there. I I've, I was showered with nothing but love. They say, hey, welcome to Korea. We're happy to have you here. And in fact, my first month in the country, I never forget this. I was having I was having trouble in South Korea. I was in the city of Suwon, which is about about an hour or so south of Seoul, depending on how you get there. Anyway, I was having a lot of trouble there, and all the foreigners that were there that had experience, none of them wanted to help me out. Hmm. But I literally, I remember I prayed and I said, "God, I need a sign." And literally a second later, um, you know, it felt like the Holy Spirit said to me, "Look up." I saw a sign. It was a church on a on the top floor of a building. I said, hey, we have English service here at six o'clock on Sundays. And sure enough, I looked at my watch, it was six o'clock. So I rushed straight in there. They welcomed me in. They had an English speaking service and um, it was a great time. In fact, I'm still friends with those people at that church to this day because of it. Yeah, I, I tell you what my, my own experience was like for people who haven't probably experienced a long time abroad in, in, in places like Korea, where I also live, by the way, and or Japan. I, I once met a, a, a woman from uh, somewhere from the Caribbean uh, islands, and she was telling me that she had this very racist experience in Korea because she was riding on the subway, and uh, somehow she felt that nobody wanted to sit next to her. Now, this just to make it clear, because I, I, I hear this a lot. Okay, now, this is my my everyday experience in Japan. I live in Japan, and this is my... And, and I think, what you, what, like you mentioned in the video, there's a lot of projection. There's a lot of uh, uh, we ourselves perceiving ourselves as being different. Therefore, we think that if we have a, an empty seat next to us and nobody sits there, it's because of the color of our skin. Uh, mm -hmm. I, that is preposterous. And uh, this is just projection. I, I, I'm curious, uh, what, what, what was your experience? 
Oh, you know, I've actually had that happen too in both Korea and Japan. Right. Me personally, I like it because I'm a big man, right? I'm 187 centimeters tall. Okay. And and um and I got like some wide shoulders, wide broad shoulders. I'm just like, shoot, more space for me. I think maybe one time I, I may have felt bad, but it's just because I just had a bad day. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side of that, though, I never forget this. Um, one time I was in Japan, there was a mother. She was up there. She was in the, on the train with her two kids. Her kids didn't want to sit next to me. They were they were afraid of me. Well, you know, because I was different. They, you know, I wasn't someone that they've ever seen before. But the mother, she kind of got them out of that. And mm -hmm. I was all smiles with the kids. I, I spoke to them in, in Japanese. And uh, after a while, they just felt, they just kind of just felt comfortable around me after a while a, a lot of it I, I i do understand though some people they just don't a, a lot of times from from my understanding is that some people they don't want to sit next to anybody that speaks english they don't want to be in a situation to where they might have to speak english but i've also had instances where i've had other people that that did speak english and they just wanted to talk to them in practice and so we would cut it up we would um and we would become friends in fact i i made a really good friend on the train <laughs> Uh, who he owns like two restaurants in Seoul, and he was just, he just asked me say hey what you hey he saw me live streaming he said hey what's this which thing you got going on I said I'm just live streaming and we ended up talking he tells me oh yeah I used to live in New York that's how I know English blah 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 and I was like hey that's pretty cool boom we became buddies and we're still friends to this day awesome awesome it, yeah what I can say though for her situation I understand that um it, it is very common it's not just black people that deal with that um I mean. Uh, uh, non-black people also deal with that too. Mm. I don't know. I mean, it could be xenophobia, could be racism, it could be just not wanting to be around foreigners. I don't know. Me personally, I don't. I tend to not really think about stuff like that. You know, come just like, hey, you you do you, I do me. You know, you're not bothering me, I'm not gonna bother you. It's all good. Do you feel more or less comfortable in US right now than 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 you felt comfortable back in in Japan or Korea? Actually, it's about the same, really. Me, right. me personally, I guess with me personally, I never have any issues because again, I'm a big man mm. and I look threatening. Nobody, nobody really messes with me. Nobody gives me a hard time. I get along, I get along with anybody and everybody I possibly can. I have the gift of gab. I know how to talk to people. And it seems like when things are going to get bad, uh, I use things that my dad taught me how to just deescalate stuff just so things don't get worse. You know, people, people here in the USA, will say, oh, we got it so bad here, this, that, and the other. I say, y'all guys don't know how good you got it with the freedoms that we have. In fact, if anything, me going, me living overseas made me more patriotic and made, made me love the freedoms that we have here in this country more than anything. Anybody watching this, all right, if you don't have a passport, get it. Go travel somewhere because you never know how your life could change by going into another country and, and seeing things for, how they, for um, what they are. You might learn a thing or two. All right, or you just might just have some fun, period. But all right, if uh, anybody wants to find me, I am um, at S-H-A-U-N-O-N-S-I-T-E underscore on Twitter or X. Uh, you can find me on YouTube, Sean On Site. And I'm also on TikTok, Sean On Site T-W-O. And um, if you, and if anybody watches this and they want to know more about stuff that I can't talk about on in public on social media, I have a Telegram. Um, the link is in my my link tree and you can just join that you can uh, uh, uh join in with myself and other people that are travelers and we can each give each other advice and talk to each other about um how we can actually get around from whatever country and give us some tips that's all i got